Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays. Taking a look at the P 2 M82 Russian dive bomber by the request of Dimitri. Uh, Dimitri is a longtime subscriber to the channel and is a very active commenter. He's never requested an airframe review. In fact, he's not even requesting one now. What he's actually asking for is to show people how to use a dive bombing aircraft because he feels like there's a lot of potential in this airframe and the ability to dictate how a battle goes and that it's a good alternative to the typical B-17Gs that you see flying around or even the Doe 217M. Uh, I'm going to say that as far as tier 6 bombers go, I find this one to be one of the most fun aircraft to fly. Uh, I really enjoy the speed, the ability to get around the battlefield, and the concept of having a forward firing gun even on an aircraft like this is also a very capable and dangerous threat to the enemy. So we only get four bombs, they get a really quick reload however. We're going to try and get both of these bombs dead center on that site. There we go, effective drops on those targets. We are planning our escape vector immediately, but I know that there isn't gonna be a lot coming in here. We are actually heading towards the other side of the map uh, on the opposite side of where the enemy spawns and the opposite side of the battlefield. So I'm actually gonna use some of my boost, get some of my airspeed back up, get that, air, that altitude back up for potential airspeed. I'm gonna hit that boost cooler and we're going to cool those engines down so we can get to the next area. Now we're not climbing too high because our next target is actually going to be this mining facility. The mining plans are very important. This aircraft cannot capture that zone in a single pass, unlike a lot of the carpet bombing aircraft or even a DOE 217 is pretty effective at being able to capture a site like that in a single run. Our team did some really great work taking the center zone. We're unfortunately down an aircraft right now. I'm using the descent to kind of build up this airspeed and hold it a little bit. So we're getting up to uh, almost 400 miles an hour, which at tier six is a really good airspeed. We're trying to be careful on our run in here so that we were not getting caught out by the enemy by the AA from this site. I'm actually gonna go into the bomb site mode because you do have a bomb site mode on this aircraft. And we're gonna drop one, two, three, four. And that should be enough to be able to get all the structures in the middle. That gave us a good amount of the capture already done. We're pretty good on our reload. And we're staying low so we don't get shot up by the AA. Hopefully, our ground attacker will be able to finish the zone. If he does, then we can move on to trying to counter the enemy's zone as well. Looks like our team is putting a lot of effort into grabbing that command center, which is totally fine with me. Dropping the nose here. Ooh. Looks like the enemy is coming in here trying to contest our area. Let's drop on this site right here. And we managed to finish it off. We're gonna do something a little bit crazy here and that's going to be going up and after a B-17. Now this is a Delta, so this is only the tier five, but we do have a forward firing gun which means we do have a capability to counter this aircraft to a certain degree. He is most likely gonna be turning back to try to take this zone. So we're gonna wait for him to make that move. And now we're gonna go in for an intercept. This is only recommended in an instance where you have a bot bomber typically if there's a player bomber he's gonna have way too much capability with his tail gunners to be able to really wreck your aircraft but we're kind of sitting in that sweet spot where he only has one gun that's able to get on us right now 
and we manage to take him out, which means that we get to keep this zone for just a little bit longer. Finally, we have some allies coming in here to give us a hand, but we have an enemy IL-2 that I'm a little bit concerned about right now. What is he going after next? I'm looking for his target. I want to be able to bomb trap him, which I think I'm going to be able to do here. Let's go ahead and do a one, two, three, four. And there we go. Bomb trapped him. Perfect. Let's build back up that. Those bombs. Oh, there's another enemy. That's another player. I didn't realize that. Then this definitely means we need to try and counter him. Ooh, I don't know if we took out his tail or if he just got overcommitted, but it looks like he just ate the dirt right there. We have all five of our bombers made it to the enemy <laughs> to the enemy site over there, so we just got all the all the mining plants are captured. Nice. The team is doing good. We've got a really good Faka Wolf on our team, a key 102. Lots of solid platforms giving us a hand here. Let's see if we can get a repeat of what we had with the B-17D. So, typically, you're going to find that battles go one of two ways in a bomber. Well, they can go one of three ways, let's be honest. There's really quick ones because you managed to get air supremacy because you're doing your job right there or the rest of your team was like in this case the other one is that it's a really long battle and a loss or it's a really short battle and a loss but a win's a win's a win so i'm happy with that all right so this is uh future v and unfortunately we don't get the end results from this because the game crashes thanks for that really appreciate it. it's been happening a lot lately anyways let's move on let's do another battle because in air supremacy that's a pretty quick match and i still want to highlight some of the capabilities of the airframe so this is going to be a little bit more tricky of a battle and is going to take a little bit more creativity on our part all right, so we're back into it, another battle. And in this battle, we have the command center in the center of the map. And then we have a garrison and a mining plant on our side while well, they've got the same on the other side. So my initial thought here is I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna help with the command center and then I'm going to essentially vacate the area like I, i've done my part i'm going to draw my munitions and i'm going to leave uh, as a dive bomber we're going to go ahead and get a little bit of climb going on here get some altitude so we, we can drop down on these targets now maintaining at around 300 miles an hour by alternating the boost a little bit we've got a lot of boost to play with it regens fairly quickly and we put a cooler on this a lot of people are probably going to be really tempted to put on a engine restarter but uh, I find that to be effective, I want to get my speed back up, and I'm going to need to do that by being able to hammer down the boost and getting myself out of those trouble shots so I'm not losing the engine in the first place. You'll note that I'm not even putting the nose down yet because I want to make this a very quick run, so I'm going to go ahead and nose over now, and I already know I'm going for the two smaller radar sites, the ones with the flat panels. Now, I probably should have lingered a little bit longer on that target. I pulled away too quickly, and that meant that my bombs were going to spread. Because it does take about a half second for those bombs to kind of release from the airframe. There's still a little bit left on that first side we went after. But I'm going to go ahead and build my airspeed and altitude back up. Uh, if we can hammer down the boost, we can actually climb in a straight vertical and lose very little airspeed, which is what's nice about this airframe. All right, so leveling back off at around 7,000 plus. 
this is going to go against a lot of things that I typically preach, which are, which is pretty much always stay inside your optimum altitude except for extreme circumstances. These dive bombers really like being up higher. I'm diving a lot earlier here, but I'm trying to build up my airspeed and get out of the AA realm. Fortunately, my team's already damaged a bunch of these sites here, so I can feel free to go ahead and drop on this already damaged site with a single bomb. One here and one on the smokestack. I probably could have shot that if I was so inclined, and I had dropped a single bomb, but it was unnecessary. We were able to flip the site. I don't know why that little bomb bay door opens up, because the bombs don't actually drop out of that. They actually drop out of these four sets of semicircle rings that are located right here, and you'll see them when they respawn. In fact, the bombs, there used to be the nacelles on the back of the engines used to open up when you'd go into bomb site mode, and you could actually, that was supposedly where bombs would drop out of? I don't know. I'd have to look up this airframe again, but I'm sure that there was an internal capacity as well. All right, so we've got two people on us, both players. We're just trying to get out of the zones. That way we're not hurting our team here. But we're also pumping out as much damage as humanly possible. And we're actually using the, what is it? It's the ring, the one that is supposed to be meant for letting your gunners get on target on their own. Uh, but when you roll for increased rate of fire, you get a little bit more damage out of these. So... It's kind of like getting gas-operated action on your tail gunner, so it's a nice little boost. And you saw we definitely put the enemy on the back foot there by putting him without an engine and bringing him down almost half health, so now he's going to be struggling. We are going to spawn back in here as soon as the button reacts to me pushing it, and my initial thoughts are, okay, we lost the command center, fine, but it's already a below half way so i think i should be able to finish it off uh, with these four bombs if i just plan my targets appropriately and i don't waste any of my shots like i did on the first run in again getting up at around 7,000 feet maintaining some pretty decent air speed here i'm getting a bit anxious because i see my teammates are dying in here so i'm actually dropping the nose only about 10 degrees it allows me to be able to get my acceleration up a bit and now I'm going to nose over and come in for a full bomb run. You see that there's a shizzy whiznut at half health from when we engaged him earlier. I dropped three there, and I dropped a single one on that site. In the hindsight, I should have saved one for the back section because then I could have gone after that lighter facility that was back there with just a few buildings. But instead, we got to kill another aircraft, and yes, we do have a forward firing gun, even though we highlighted it in the last battle. Here we are again, finishing off the target, and now I'm trying to get the heck out of Dodge. And, oh, Shizzy is not paying attention to me, cool, but what is this guy? Oh, jeez, it's another, it's a heavy aircraft, P-38F. We just did a review of the P-38s, they're already nasty enough. We've actually got like four tail gunners on this, even though there's only two guys, um, but we were able to dissuade the P-38, at least for a moment there, and now he's coming back on us. Oh, come on, man, get out of here. I don't want to die in that zone, so I'm going to use my really good climb capability to get up and over, and we're still getting those machine guns singing on him, and look how low he is on the hit point pool, and I just can't let him get away. Plus, there's already two fighters here, so if I just go this way, I'm, just, I'm going to end up taking way too much flak from the AA guns, and I'm also going to get killed by those turn fighters over that zone. So we're going to take advantage of this P-38 being on low health and heading back into the capture zone here. Going to go and finish off that kill, get some of the capture back on the zone. And now we're going to go ahead and do our trench run. So this is what I was trying to do initially. If we can go ahead and get in here, we're now kind of terrain masked. We're hidden from the enemy. They can't see us. And we can sneak up on this mining facility. Now, I've done this before in ground attackers, and it works out pretty well. Uh, and since this bomber is so nimble and can still maintain some really good speed, like 280 on a bomber at this tier, like... B-17s have to be hammered down the throttle to make that work, and here we are doing it fairly effectively. This is kind of like your new low-altitude bombing king. Ooh, we got an 
A6M3 Experimental. We did that review just uh, on Friday. I think we it's not a review, but we flew it with Postal. Ooh, that was a bad bomb drop. Bad bomb drop. But apparently it was good enough because we managed to take the zone anyways. Now, we do have a friendly bomber up overhead as well, but look at how much damage we were able to pump out with that tail gunner against that A6M3 Experimental. We are getting just a little bit too high, and the AA is able to actuate on us now, and that's going to be bad news. Trying to avoid this flak a little bit, but at the same time, I don't want to let him get by without getting any guns on target. Get on that tail gunner. Can we finish him? If we can finish him, that would be awesome. There we go. A lot more capture off of him. Two drops here. This is going to be a bit of a suicide run here. I know that the enemy has already gotten all these other zones, but we need to try and help our team out by evening the odds just a little bit, giving them some more time. Drop those two bombs there. We capture the zone. Maybe we can survive this onslaught of this aircraft coming after us. We managed to get Thunderer. We're still behind on points, and it looks like the mining facility there is just going to tick over. Well, it just did tick over, and that's why we're so far behind right now. Now we're going to try and get the guns on target. This is just us trying to survive. And see how he's doing that corkscrew maneuver? He wouldn't do that if we didn't have a forward firing gun. So he didn't get any of his guns on target, but we were able to get our tail gunner on him yet again, chunking away just a little bit more health. And knowing that he's going to just come back again, I decide that I'm going to turn around and try to get guns on target, but it was unnecessary. The AA, AA ended up finishing him off, so we're gonna go ahead and start heading back towards the center, but I realize that it's pretty much over at this point. Regardless of all the work that we had done, we just weren't able to eke a win out of this battle. But I still feel as though we definitely put our work in and we tried our darndest to be able to help the team out. Now, let's go ahead and go to the hangar and talk about this aircraft a little bit more, how we managed to set it up and what my plans are for the future for this airframe. All right, so not a bad battle for us. We ended up getting Thunderer. We definitely took out some aerial targets here. Not a lot, but uh, enough to be able to be very effective at being able to get those capture points as well as sectors captured. And you can see we managed to take out eight ground targets for a total of 31,000 damage. I feel like we did our job here. And just like we did in the previous battle, we, we did our job, but... It didn't take nearly as much effort as it did in this one. So what's really the deciding factor? I think it really just depends on the match you're in, the team you're with, uh, because this does rely very heavily on support while a B-17G can just wade on into the battlefield and be able to get those bombs off. And then if he can flip the zone, cool. If not, he's going to make everybody that comes near him hate themselves as they get riddled with 50 kills. So... Let's go ahead and take a better look at the airframe and see how I've actually set this aircraft up. Uh, there it is, the turret gun laying drive. So this typically is meant to be used is for the gunner to lock on in automatic mode. It even says here aiming speed in automatic mode is quicker. Cool. However, the bonus characteristic we rolled is a 5% to the defensive turret's rate of fire and burst. So as far as I know, and the way that this has been working for me, is that that, increase, that essentially increases the rate of fire by 5% on the tail gunner. Now, a lot of you might be saying, so what, I've got a gas-operated action that increases my rate of fire by like 10% or something. Great. However, your fire forward firing gun that you're trying to get on target is still has a bit of a spread. The guns aren't necessarily hitting very consistently, but a tail gunner is essentially an auto lock on weapon. So if you're increasing the rate, the rate of fire by 5%, you're increasing the damage by 5%. The gas operated action is increasing your damage by 10%, but it's decreasing the accuracy and you still have to make those shots land on target. So I think this might be kind of the best bet. I have tried other configurations on this aircraft uh, to include the, what is it, the turret gun sight for getting better range when you're firing with the manual mode, but 
it, it doesn't necessarily need it. The the range isn't all that bad on the tail gunners, and it was it's enough to be able to keep the enemy hurting. Uh, defensive fire is really going to help this aircraft out because there was quite a few times that we were able to get the aircraft really low on health, but it would be nice if we could keep ourselves at a higher hit point pool because it was real hit or miss at the end of that last match. Uh, we went with the engine boost mixture. We went with the engine boost mixture because it makes sense for me. Uh, it's essentially, we're going to be flying this a lot like we would, like a heavy going in for a bombing run. It's going to be flying in dives. It's going to be making steep climbs. It's going to be making a lot of maneuvers. So it really needs its boost for that climb rate to be able to get itself accelerated. Uh, and you'll note that when you put on a piece of equipment like the improved boost mixture, mixture you're going to note that your rate of climb actually increases. So when I take this off of here, you see that it actually loses 14 feet per second compared to if we were to throw on here like an operated engine doesn't increase it at all so just something to bear in mind that it, while you can get something for the operated engine for the straight and level flying this aircraft as a dive bomber is going to almost always be in the climb so i think that this is your best bet uh this is debatable uh i lose my engines in this aircraft a lot but in those instances, I'm usually not getting away anyways. Once they're on me, they're on me. So I'd rather put myself in a position that I'm able to get that boost back so I'm never in a position or I'm seldom in a position to be getting shot at by the enemy as long as I'm planning appropriately. Uh, if we get this thing specialized, I debate putting in the improved mixture control just to get a little bit more out of the speed because every bit of speed you can squeeze out of this thing is going to make it that much more effective. Uh, all in all, I do think that there is a place and a niche for this type of airframe. I find them to be way more engaging and a lot more entertaining to fly as someone who typically doesn't fly bombers. I mean, I've got a bunch of bombers, right? But I'm usually flying heavies, altitude fighters, multi-rolls, and this is going to fall more in line with the play style that I prefer opposed to flying in a B-17 or a B-32 where you're spending a lot of time either in your bomb reticle, shooting at ground target, dropping on ground target, and then hopping into your tail gunners and managing all of that. Now, that there's a place for that, and it can be really entertaining for some people, and I've enjoyed it myself. However, this is going to be more engaging flight-wise, so... I still think that it's very effective. It's just hit or miss on whether or not uh, your team's targets sync with what you're going after with this platform. It works really good as a damage augmentation tool to go in with the whole heap and drop your munitions and then leave the area right away while your team continues to dogfight in like a critical node. So all in all, I like them, but... It really is up to the individual to decide if this fits their play style. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.